Can I make friends with this person? Let's find out. But first. Hey, Kids Club. Before we see if May can turn a total stranger into a friend, let's get to today's big idea. God wants to spend time with us. Got it? Okay, back to you, May. Let's see if I can make friends with this guy. But first. Okay, cool. Yeah, no way. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's your name? I'll call you back. I'm pa Paco. And what's my name? May. Yeah, are we friends? Of course. Do you yeah. like to spend time with me? Yes. Why? Because you're important to me. Duh. Thanks. Bye. Hey, what's your name? Allison. What's my name? May. Are we friends? Yeah. Do you like to spend time with me? Yeah. Why? Well, I like talking with you. Thanks. Pardon me. Oh. <laughs> What's your name? Terrence Aloysius McCraney. I thought your middle name was EJ. <laughs> Just that's the oh. What's my name? May Elizabeth Quinn. Impressive. Are we friends? Would I know your middle name if you weren't? Your point. Do you like to spend time with me? You bet. Why? Because I get to know you better. Thanks, buddy. Excuse me. What's your name? Abby. What's my name? May. Are we friends? Yes. <laughs> Do you like to spend time with me? Sure. Why? Because I care about you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Those are all real people who are real friends of mine that I really spend time with. Now, what if I ask someone I don't know that well? Only one way to find out. But first. Kids, May's about to meet someone she doesn't know that well. But she's an adult, and she's with a group of safe people. For your safety, just talk to people you know and trust. Okay, back to me. Uh, excuse me, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, my name's Zach. You don't know my name, right? Um, I, I think I know your name. Oh, really? I, I think so. What's my name? Would it happen to be May? It is. Okay, but are we friends? I, I don't know. I, I like know of you, and I, like I know your name, yeah. but I don't I don't know if we're quite friends yet. But do you think if we spent some time together that we might become friends? Yeah, I, I can see that happening. Okay. Uh, can I get you a smoothie? I love a smoothie. Let's go. Uh, by the way, what's your favorite smoothie flavor? Do you know? Oh, uh, I love anything with strawberries, kiwis, and bananas. We can do that. How's your smoothie? My smoothie is a 10 out of 10. Oh, mine too. Green for me, pink for you. Mm -mm. But I do have one very important question for you. All right, I'm ready. Are we on our way to becoming friends? You know what? I think I think we could be good friends. I, I see that happen. Awesome. Okay, and why is that? Well, uh, we spent some time together. We got smoothies. I don't get smoothies with just anybody, so... Yeah, we spent time together and we got to know each other. I think you're right. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That was fun. Now, what if I asked God those questions? I would say, what's your name? He would say, God. I would say, what's my name? He would say, May, because he knows everything and he knows me. I would say, are we friends? He would say, absolutely. I would say, do you like to spend time with me? He would say, of course. I would say, why? And he would probably say something like what my other friends said. I like getting to know you. I care about you. I like talking with you. You are important to me. Pause. Remember that person that May met and had a smoothie with? For them to become friends, they had to spend time together. Now here's something super duper my oh my, extra good and extra fly. God wants to be our friend. And that means he wants to spend time with us because he cares about us, we're important to him, and he wants to know us better. Now let's see where May is now. There's a story in the Bible, in the book of Mark, about a group of five friends. One of these friends hadn't been able to walk for 30 years, and the four other friends wanted him to be healed. So when they heard that Jesus was in their town, they were determined to have their friend spend time with Jesus. Because they knew that if their friend could spend time with Jesus, Jesus could help him. So the five friends went to the house where Jesus was. Once the five guys got to the house where Jesus was, there was a crowd, a huge crowd. Turns out there were lots of people who wanted to spend time with Jesus. There was no way they'd be able to get through the crowd to Jesus. But one of the friends had an idea, kind of a crazy idea. 
Want to know what it was? Watch this. God's story. Jesus heals a man. So part of God's story is when Jesus healed a guy on a mat. And it begins like this. Once, Jesus was in a town called Capernaum. People in other towns came to hear him teach and see him do miracles. Remember, a miracle is something that can only happen with God's power. And since Jesus is God's son, he has the power to do miracles. He brought a dead man back to life, changed water into wine, and fed thousands of people with one little boy's lunch. Kids, Jesus has all the power of God, but came to earth as a baby so he could experience life like we do. He understands how we feel when we lose a friend, get made fun of, or laugh so hard our stomachs hurt. So while Jesus was in Capernaum, crowds of people flocked to see him. But Jesus wasn't in a big stadium. He was in a regular house. So it was packed. In fact, it was so crowded that every door and window was blocked. Good thing Jesus didn't have claustrophobia. That's a fear of being in a cramped space. You know, like an elevator or maybe a doghouse. Anyway, there were people stuck outside who wanted to get in. One of them was the guy laying on a mat, carried by four of his friends. See, he was paralyzed, so he couldn't walk by himself. Let's call this guy Matt, even though the Bible doesn't tell us his real name. Matt's friends knew Jesus could do a miracle and make him walk. Problem is, there's no way five more people could fit into the house. So you'll never guess what Matt's friends did. They climbed up to the roof, dug a hole, and lowered Matt down right next to Jesus. Yep, that's right. A hole right through the roof. Let's hope it didn't rain for a while. Some people probably thought Matt's friends were crazy, but they were willing to do anything to get close to Jesus. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get close to Jesus? Well, Jesus was thrilled to see Matt. He loves it when we try to get close to him and ask for help. In fact, as soon as Matt was lowered down, Jesus said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Jesus had never met Matt before, but he calls everybody who believes in him his friend. And he will forgive us for the wrong things we do too, if we want to start following him. Now, lots of people were there to see Jesus, but a few of these people didn't believe Jesus was actually God's son. These people were the religious leaders, and they were thinking in their heads, who does Jesus think he is? Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he said, I want you to know that God has given me the power to forgive sins. And just to make sure they knew he was God's son, he told Matt to pick up his mat and walk home. So Matt did. We don't know if Matt walked, skipped, or ran, but we do know that the people there said, we have never seen anything like this. They were amazed. Whoa. And that, kids, is a miracle. And that's the story of Jesus healing a guy. So in case you missed it, here's a quick version. Matt needed a miracle. Crowds blocked him from Jesus. Matt's friends climbed on the roof. They dug a hole. They lowered Matt down, right next to Jesus. Jesus called Matt his friend. He forgave his sins. Then Jesus healed Matt. It was amazing. And that's a part of God's story. What a crazy bunch of friends. What a good bunch of friends. When it seemed like it would be impossible for their friend to spend time with Jesus, one of them said, uh, we could cut a hole in the roof and lower our friend down to Jesus. So the four friends got up on the roof and started digging into it. Now there was probably a whole other kind of crowd gathering because four crazy guys were digging a hole in a roof. And once they had a human-sized hole in that roof, they lowered their friend down into the house where Jesus was. Jesus spent time with the five friends and said something special to the man who couldn't walk. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. And then he told that man who hadn't taken a single step in 30 years to walk. And that's exactly what the man did. His friends had been right. Spending time with Jesus had led to something really good. And it's important for you to know that we don't have to get four crazy friends to dig a hole through the roof to spend time with God. We can spend time with God inside, outside, alone, with people, loudly, quietly, tired, wide awake. It doesn't matter where you are or how you feel. 
God wants to spend time with you because he cares about you. You're important to him and he wants to know you. So let's all brainstorm for 10 seconds. Think about ways that you want to spend time with God. I'll share mine with you when the time's up and go. Okay, here's what I have. I wanna spend time with God on a hike in the woods, by praying before I eat, right when I wake up in the morning, before my feet hit the floor, uh, when my favorite football team wins, and then the timer ran out. Okay, take some time to think of ways that you want to spend time with God, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Kids Club. Remember, God wants to spend time with you because he cares about you, you're important to him, and he wants to know you. Have you ever read this book? If you give a mouse a cookie, it's about how one small decision leads to another decision that 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 leads to another. We get the point. Oh, okay. Well, the reason I bring up this book is because when you spend time with God, you're probably going to start to know him better. And then you're probably going to start to care about God which will just make you want to spend more time with him, which will mean you know him better, which will make you care even more, which will make you want to spend even more time with him. I think you see where this is going. But here's the thing. God always wants to spend time with you because he loves you, he cares about you, and he knows you. Oh, snap! You forgot the recap! Okay, I'll do it. It takes time to get to know someone. And that's why God wants to spend time with us, because he loves us and knows us and wants us to know him and love him. See you soon, Kids Club.